In this video, I'll introduce some modifications I made to my CS144 alternator um, as I was looking for a um, easier way of making a bicycle generator and a uh, cycling resistance trainer. The CS144, uh, I had used it for about half a year before looking into different ways of making it more useful in the fact that um, as it is, the voltage regulator controls the field current that uh, goes to the coil and the resistance that's put uh, onto the drivetrain here. And so I looked into the technologies that were used in the, the voltage regulator, which is for the purposes of controlling the field coil strength. It uses pulse width modulation. What that means is it maintains the voltage while it varies the amount of uh, amperage that goes uh, out to the coil. So I looked at the different uh, up, you know, modules that are available uh, over the market to, to do the same thing. And what I came up with was this $10 LED light dimmer, which uses the same technology. It uses pulse width modulation to vary the amperage. It keeps 12 volts going out the output, 12 volts in, 12 volts out. But by varying the pulse width, it... Um, it changes the, the amperage which goes out. This particular model varies the amperage from 0 to uh, 2 amps, which is plenty for my application. So what I did was uh, the output of the pulse width modulator here, the LED light dimmer, uh, goes through an ammeter and down this extension cord here, all the way down to where I've connected it to the casing of the alternator which is ground and then what I've done is I went inside and disabled the voltage regulator and took the, where the output of the voltage regulator went to the brush I introduced this cable here so that the output of the LED light dimmer goes directly to one of the brushes which feeds the positive side of the field coil so I can control it using the light dimmer now that on the input of the the input of the LED light dimmer, it's very simple. All I do is uh, take an extension cord here, and I connect it through a cigarette socket to the. Uh, I use a storage battery. You could also use a an adapter to accomplish the same thing. A second modification I made to the CS144 was to the stator coil, the stator core. Uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, the stock CS144 comes with a delta configuration, which is this thing here. And this is the original coil that was in this unit. Um, as you can see, the, what the delta does is it connects the end of coil 1 to the beginning of coil 2, the end of coil 2 to the beginning of coil 3, and the end of coil 3 to the beginning of coil 1. If you draw that in a schematic, it looks like the Greek letter delta, which is like why they call this a delta configuration. What I did was I took a um, stator coil from a, a 21SI, which is a 24 volt uh, alternator instead of a 12 volt, and they use a start configuration in that. And what that does is it takes the, the starts of coils 1, 2, and 3, and instead of tying them to the other coils, they just tie them together uh, in a common bond. So all those starts are together and the ends of each of the coils go directly to the um, voltage rectifier. And what that allows you to do is get more voltage and less amperage. You get the same wattage, but you get more voltage um, at lower RPMs, which is good for this application. So um, those are the two modifications. You got the uh, LED light dimmer controlling the input to the um, rotor coil and then you have a star configuration um, stator coil which um, allows you to one control the resistance to the bicycle and, and therefore the output power the input power um, to the coil and then the output is going to give you higher voltage sooner which is good for this application especially since I've taken the output here, and instead of going to the battery, it's not going to charge the battery. Uh, the output 
will go to the grid tie inverter. And then I've got my voltmeter connected directly to the grid tie inverter. So you can see the change as I, um, you can tell as the speedometer shows a higher uh, kilometers per hour, you'll see the voltage go up. And at the same time, the output from the grid tie inverter is going to go through this watt meter and then onto the grid so that um, you can you can monitor uh, what the wattage is going to be. I've got so you'll see the the ammeter here um, go up as I adjust the LED light dimmer which um, will change the the amperage which goes to the the fuel coil. As the current increases you should see the voltage increase and also the wattage. So let me crank this up and show you how it works. What I'll show first is how the, how low RPMs can generate uh, electricity using this configuration. Uh, what I'll do is I'll ramp this up on the bicycle and the uh, alternator to about 1600 RPMs at the alternator side. Then I'll uh, apply um, between 200 and 300 milliamps to the field coil and we'll see how much electricity we can generate. So this is about a little over 1,600 RPMs. I'll go ahead and turn the power on. That's about 300 amps. And as you can see, the Britain inverter is already negotiating power and generating 20 watts. So with very little effort, I'm generating 30 watts for the grid, 35. Let me uh, crank this up now. You can see without a whole lot of effort, you get quite a bit of output from this configuration. As you can see from that demonstration, it doesn't take a whole lot of input power uh, and a whole lot of leg power to create um, some significant output using the grid tie inverter. Uh, I usually use about 200 300 milliamps to warm up during my interval training and then crank it up to about 800 milliamps uh, if I want to get some anaerobic uh, training in. The nice thing about the light dimmer is it allows you to create your own course for the interval training and you can make it as easy or as hard as you want. If you don't want to practice spinning, you can keep it at low milliamps and if you want to, to do hill climbing um, or you know, practice against uh, stiff headwinds, and then you crank it up to about 800 milliamps. At 800 milliamps, I can get it up to about 235 watts of power output. Um, my average total output for a 40 minute session uh, using this configuration is about 30 watt hours which is three times what I could get without using the uh, without making any of the modifications to the CS144 so I get more power three times the power uh, I can I can you know flexibly come up with my intervals uh, for the the training session and it works out very well so have at it and stay tuned to this channel for more updates